God, well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning, God. We thank you, Lord, that we can come before you ready to, to hear about your word, Lord, and to walk more in your word, Lord. Lord, we make the choice to walk in love because your word says so, and we are your children. We thank you, Father God, that right now, Lord, we are focused on love, 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 and that you will continually walk with us, God, and abide in us, God, as we abide in you, Father. We thank you, we praise your name, amen. amen. All right, we've been talking about walking in love for the past month, which will not even begin to scratch the surface on love. Um, and so we're going to continue that today on, on walking in love. Um, who here has had to use a love walk lately on people? People get up on your face and they okay, praise God, all right, so no, all right. So it, it's important, church, to know what love is. So let's do a quick review and we'll, and, and we'll add uh, just a little bit more this week. Uh, our anchor verse is Ephesians 5, 2. It says, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. The message Bible says, mostly God does, sorry, most of what God does is love you. Keep company with him and learn a life of love. Observe how Christ loved. His love was not cautious, but extravagant. God's love is not cautious towards you. No matter what you do to him, it's extravagant. He did love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. Love like that. We went over the four types of love. You have phileo, that is the love you have between your brother or, or your, your, your brother on the earth, whether it be specifically non-related brothers. You have the storage love, that is the love that you have between siblings or family members. You know, and you have eros, that's the erotic love, that you have for a, a wife or a husband of the opposite sex. I said that, didn't I? All right, so anyway, uh, and then we have agape love. Everyone say agape. agape. That's the love that we should walk in 24-7, 365. Why? Because when you walk in phileo, eros, or storage, it's no big deal to God. Do you know why? Because those things come naturally. We discussed last week how there are certain vitamins in your body, certain chemicals in your body that aren't made or come on, BG, they aren't um, the, the body can't produce certain vitamins and minerals so you've got to take a what supplement to put them there well agape is not produced naturally in our in our heart agape must be put in there by God so agape love is simply selfless sacrificial unconditional love the highest of the four types of love in the Bible so we all want to live in agape so it's no big deal for us to love see I have a brother named Leonard. I love him. God says, great. That's what you're supposed to do. I, um, I love Derek. He's my phileo brother. Okay, good. No big deal. Great. Awesome. Um, I love my wife in an erotic way. Okay, but that's what's supposed to happen. Okay, good. But then when you get into, now, when I have strife with Derek, when I have strife with my wife, my brother, that's when agape should kick in. So it's no big deal to God that you have that normal kind of love, that natural love. Agape kicks in when this love is affected or offended or endangered, amen? So we've got to make sure that when the opportunity comes up, we're going to be selfless towards our wife, sibling, or church member. We're going to be sacrificial saying, you know what, I'm wrong. If you think you're right, you know what, I'm wrong. Now, if the heaven and hell is just one thing, but you know what? Most of the stuff we fight about, y'all, it's not a big deal. It really isn't. It's, it's kind of sixth grade-ish. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's kind of juvenile. Well, but it's kind of juvenile. Why? Because you want to be right. And because your flesh wants to rule over you, you're going to fight because you'll be right. It's juvenile. And so as a agape person, as a CCF, committed Christ follower, your whole goal is to live in agape. You're going to live in a selfless, sacrificial, unconditional love, the highest of the four types of love. So when you're loving someone who is unlovable in a agape type way you're loving that person through god meaning that god has poured out his spirit on top of us you know let's go to the next one here the, the next slide i didn't take my bad uh where is it awesome let's read this um therefore having been justified by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ through whom also we have access by faith into his grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of glory. That's verse three. And yes, verse three. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulation. Everyone say tribulation. tribulation. 
tribulation. That means that you should cherish and enjoy and look forward to tribulation. I'll say it again. You should cherish, enjoy, and look forward to tribulation. Why? Because it brings out the agape love in us. Here we go. Watch this now. <clears throat> Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. See, when you're loving somebody who's not lovable, you're going to produce some perseverance and some character. When you're loving that, that person at your job or on the street who, who uh, defames you or acts stupid towards you, and you go, hey, you know what? That's great. Praise God. You are, God is producing character in you. He's producing perseverance in you. What we do is we get in the flesh and we want to hit somebody. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Now watch this. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Now what does it mean for us? If you are a Christian, you cannot say that you can't love somebody right now. Because he's already given to you right now. He's poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So you've got to walk in love with whomever you're walking around with and whoever got this in your life. And you know what? That person may be there for a few seconds, irritated at you, and God says, you know what? Walk in love. Perfect example, yesterday. Hallelujah. Praise God. My daughter played soccer. I played soccer back in the day, back in the you know, early 50s. And so, I'm kidding. And, okay, okay, now watch this. They played a team. They're all 12 or 13-year-old girls. I think they're all on steroids, but they were huge girls. And so my daughter just, you know, the team was a real rough team and playing real hard and everything. And so and the referee wasn't calling a thing. And I'm very, very competitive. Very competitive. I hate to lose. You know, and so um, I had to really hold myself in. And so then I had a, what's it's called a word of knowledge, meaning that something's going to happen beforehand. I, when the game started, saw my daughter laying flat on the field from a hip. And I said, okay, so I began to pray. Now, y'all do know that some, just because you see things and pray for them to me, ain't going to happen. Okay, but she's out there. It's going to happen, or it could happen. So the game went on, and the Holy Spirit said, Jerry, you know what? You need to go talk to the referee and tell him who you are. And tell them what your background is. And say, you know what? You need to go ahead and, and establish some, some order in this game or someone's going to get hurt. I didn't do that. So um, the game went on, game went on, and it kept, the girls kept getting rougher and rougher and more dangerous. So um, I had, second half, I went over to the other side because there's no boundary lines at all on this field. And so you can kind of go where you want to go. So I began to cheer for my daughter close to their bench. <laughs> and so the coach goes, hey, ref, can you have this uh, parent go on his side? And the ref said, hey, I don't care where you go. Just go away from the side. Okay, cool. So I went on the end of the field because I was helping coach my daughter in the goalie. Great. Cool. Bravo. Well, then the coach of the other team, who just happened to be a non-black Came to me. I'm just, I'm just keeping it real. Because I don't care if it's black, white, whatever, but you shouldn't have said that. So anyway, <laughs> he comes to me and said, hey, can you go on your side? I said, the ref said, I'm fine here. I'm going to stay right here. I'm going to with my daughter and the other girl. And he goes, well, the rules say, I said, sir, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And, and he goes, well, if I showed you the rules, you probably couldn't read them anyway. I just, I, 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 I stood there. I said, okay, I got, I'm, I'm, I'm just, 
Because I remember the sermon. He is poured out. <laughs> See, PJ's got to remember his own stuff sometimes, y'all. Okay? So then, I was there, and the game kept going on, and so I said, I said, okay, so I said, all right. So my daughter had a ball come to her. She brought it over, real smooth like, by the way. Brought it up, and the girl got mad. Jayla was ahead of the girl. The ball was ahead of the other girl, and she goes, bam! And then hits her in the stomach. Well, in, in soccer, that's either a yellow or red card. The ref just called a foul. So Jayla's on the ground, writhing in pain, crying. So me, I run the field and go get my baby. <laughs> I just hear a word. So then a parent on that team says, what she said? What's that thing doing on the field? Wow. So I just got her on the field and I put her on their bench. <laughs> they're like, they're like, Sarah said, so you okay, baby? All right, good, all right. So, hey, God has poured his love, his love, his love. I got to baby, I got to walk this like y'all do. Because see, Satan knows my buttons to push. And that guy, I had my buttons pushed like an old typewriter. I mean, they were being pushed and pushed and pushed. Thank God my wife wasn't there. It would have been ugly fugly. I mean, it would have been bad. I mean, oh, y'all would have heard about us. <laughs> Woo! Lord have mercy. So church, we've got to walk this walk too. We do. And so we've got to walk the walk. It doesn't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter, oh, it's my daughter. And God's as well. But so what? You're still a man of God. No matter where you go, you are a person of the Lord. You are a CC, a committed Christ follower. So you don't have the right to act how you want to act because you're mad. Well, I heard, I heard two amens then. Let's try it again. You ain't got the right, sorry teachers, to act how you want to act because you're mad. And everyone said, Amen. Or you're offended or your feelings are hurt. Pastor James, who's one of our, our board members, says, you know what? I'm a dead man. So I don't, I don't feel what you feel. So if you cuss me out or call me a name or spit on me, I don't feel because you know what? Dead men can't feel nothing. I'm alive in Christ Jesus. And Christ Jesus has love for that person. Oh boy, I just boy, see, but 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 the flesh, I was I tried to dial Jerry's number, but I just <laughs> I knew he, he couldn't get there that fast. So anyway, alright, here we go. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Mark 12, 29. It says this. The first of all, uh, Jesus said to him, the first of all. Or the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the one, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is, or like it, or the, the second like it is, this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. This is by, by, by Christ. And watch this. Neighbor means in the Greek, the word is pronounced pleseon, and it means a neighbor, a friend, any other person, and where two are concerned, the other, thy fellow man. According to Christ, other, any other man, irrespective of nation or religion, with whom we live or with whom we chance to meet. Chance to meet. So that coach that just talked about me real bad, that was a chance meeting. A chance, and he's my spiritual neighbor because we share the earth. So any chance meeting, the enemy is looking to push your buttons to say, huh, I'm going to see how they act if we're pregnant to this person. Hallelujah. John 15, 9 says this. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends, neighbors, or anybody at a chance meeting. So when you lay down your life for someone, you're walking in agape love. 
And you have it because you're a Christian. I hear the fans. But no amens. <laughs> and then it says, um, what, where are honey? 12, 14, thank you. It says, um, you are my friends if you do whatever I do or whatever I command. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his father is or his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. And that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask in my father's name, he may give you. These things I command you, that you love one another. 1 John 3.14 Now here's the, here is the test to let you know where you are spiritually. If you think that you're all, you know, Miss Christian, Mr. Christian, great, awesome. But this here is a test to let you know where you are spiritually. It says, we know that we have passed from death to life or that we have gone from being a sinner to a Christian or a carnal Christian to a CCF, a committed Christ follower, by doing this thing. Watch it says, because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Brother can be blood, church, work, street, chance, mall, anywhere. Because see, we're all God's creations. We're not all God's children, we're all his creations. You're his children when you become a Christian. So watch this. How are you treating your brother? Does your brother feel the agape love from you all the time? Now, there's a big difference between being meek and being weak. Okay, when you're weak, W-E-E-K, you don't have to, yeah, th thank you, that too. <laughs> Eight days a week, yes, W-E-A-K, love you. Show my age now. Who wrote that song? Quick. Okay, they did. I knew Pam had happened. No. <laughs> <laughs> they were with them when they wrote it, bro. <laughs> you were where you were. She was, yeah. Hey y'all, I'm gonna be like I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm going to grow older gracefully. Pat's Pat is a good-looking man. Not that I but Pam is a beautiful woman. <laughs> you, you know, so hey, great. I'm, I'm when I get his age, you know, I'm gonna be. That way too. Shut up now. All right, praise God. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life body in him. What does that mean to you? If you hate somebody, anybody, you don't have Christ's power in you. I'll say that again. If you hate anybody, well, I don't hate. I don't dislike him. If you dislike anyone real strong, to where you don't want to see him anymore, Amen. well, Pastor, but they molested me. Well, then you pray for them. Because they also need salvation. Well, they say they're saved. They ain't saved. They lie. They're deceived. Well, but, but Pastor, my mom and dad weren't good to me. Well, but they did the best they could with what they had. So you pray for them. But Pastor, my boss is a jerk. Well, so were you at one time. So pray for them too. <laughs> see, we're so, see, we forget where we used to be. We do not move. Well, and, and, you know, and I, what amazes me to see people who've been saved for like 18, 19 months and they want to start judging people. Dude, do that. I mean, where were, think about where you were two years ago. The love that you don't have for them, Christ has for you, and that's how you got saved. So maybe if you love them agape then they'll get saved through the love of God through you. Don't shun the shunnable. We love the unlovable. See, and that's the difference between every religion but ours. We love those who the world hates. We love those who are unlovable. That's why we're going, where we're going next Sunday to feed the homeless. That's why they're homeless. Because no one loves them. And they don't feel love. And they see us come in smiling and doing whatever we have to do to them to, to bless them. My God. And you know what? God says that he will repay those who help the homeless. And if God owns a cattle on a thousand hills, Lord, start the repayment plan now. <laughs> Pay me. Repay me. Amen? Here we go. Now, 
By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. But whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? My little children, love us, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Oh, pastor. I, pastor, I do love him. Well, how to prove it to him. Go and apologize for what you may have done and say, you know what? I don't want to be right. I want to be reconciled. Even if you think you're right. Because see, agape is selfless. And those who think they're right are being selfish. Here's a fan to me. <laughs> think about it. If you always think you're right, there's no agape in you. Now, not, not now, you know, if you're always saying, well, you're right. No, you're right. No, now that's being... We may think it's being humble, but that's actually being prideful. Don't know that? People go, well, you know, well, you know. That's pride. You know why? Because it's faith turned inside out. That's a long story. Watch this. Here we go. What it simply means then is that you have made, you have set up your own inability against God's supreme, supreme power. Well, God, I can't do it. Well, God says you can. But I know God, well, God says you can. So you're telling God that he's not God over your, over your life. That's pride. That's pride. That's pride. Because you're too worldly insecure. You haven't taken on the mantle and the authority of what God says you are. See, God told me, he told me, me, that says, Jerry Campers, you are fearfully and wondrously made. And see, his word is alive in me. So... Sorry, I ain't got to have nobody tell me that I'm awesome. Because the word of God says I'm awesome. Uh, Acts 20, 17, 28 says, In Christ we live and move and have our identity. See, my identity isn't in the fact that, you know what? It, it, it isn't how much money I make. It isn't what kind of car I drive because I drive a Prius. <laughs> Where's Curtis? 50 miles a gallon! Hallelujah! <laughs> All right? I don't need a Corvette. I am a Corvette. <laughs> I have a big Ford diesel, so I use that when I feel kind of damn. No, kidding. <laughs> but think about it, church. If you don't need people around you to always pump you up, the, David, the Bible says that David had to encourage himself. So don't allow the, the world to tell you that you got to be a certain size, a certain hair color, a certain hair length, a certain hair thickness, have a certain kind of education, certain skin tone, whether it's black, white, whatever, brown, green, gold, whatever. Don't, that, that's a lie. Because Christ is God, or God is God over all things. And he is God that gives the promotion, not man. I'll say it again. It is God who gives you the promotion, not man. Man can't do anything. See, the Bible says that God holds his, the, 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 the Pharaoh's heart in his hands. And he can turn it. Anybody wants to turn it? So, if, if you need a promotion, you need favor. 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 Hallelujah. Here we go. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do these things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of Jesus, his son, Jesus Christ, his son, and love one another. And he gave us command, or and as he gave us, as he gave us commandment. Now, he who keeps his commandments abides in him and in and he in him and by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us look at uh, ephesians 4 29 now what am i saying walking in love for you christians is not an option okay it's not an option for instance there are certain words that aren't allowed in my house that may be a lot of other houses but they're not an option Saying yes ma'am and no ma'am to adults 
for my kids it's, it's not an option it's yes ma'am no ma'am yes sir no sir it's not yes it's not yeah it's not okay it's yes ma'am they're an option there are things that that you may allow in your house that are not an option not an option not an option as a christian a godly love is not an option you have to walk in it why because that is your father's dna see i look like my dad i act like my dad i talk like my dad i have the dna my daughter acts like my mom my, my wife she 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 it is just uncanny uncanny she acts like her mother she acts she acts like she has attitudes sometimes like her sister i gotta a little bit but you know <laughs> i love her though just keep it real so so we don't have a choice church we, when you say lord be my lord and savior you're saying you know what i'm giving up all my rights to be who I want to be, I'm going to be who you have, have ordained you to be. Hallelujah. Here we go. So watch this. This is NLT. This is, this is what the Bible is saying that we should live like after we become Christians and, and begin to walk in, our, in agape love. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear him. Who hear them. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Woo! Man, don't bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Fornicating and desecrating the people of God. He has identified you as his own. That's mine. That's mine. That's mine. You know what? And if you're mine, you don't act like that. You don't act like that either. What are you doing? He'll just jerk you up. Have you ever jerked kids up? He'll jerk you up. He'll think about it here. That Holy Ghost pinch, HDP, and he's going to just drink it in. HDP, Holy Ghost pinch. I've been pinched many times by my mama. Don't cry either. Ouch! What's this? So that your words would be encouraging. And uh, okay, he has identified his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, 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 bitterness. That's like taking a five-day-old lemon that's been cut and had molded into like that. That's bitterness. Okay, bitterness. If you see someone that you have an issue with and you haven't dealt with it. It's called, and the Bible says to, to do what with that? You go to them, you talk to them in love, you say, you know what, this happened, how can we work this out? Because I love you, and I'm gonna walk in agape love. See, no one can make you not walk in love. You choose to get out because you want your own way. <laughs> Excuse me, God, listen, suck them up. <laughs> that's not agape, that's no way. I mean, think about it. See, the problem is that we don't want to stay here and say, hey, you know what? You feel that way, and, and I'm sorry you feel that way, but, I, but what can I do? Well, no, 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 no. Well, I, I know that, but I mean, I feel like I'm, uh, you know, okay, but yes. See, we want to be right. We want to be able to stick out there and say, you know what? I told them. She bet I'll mess me no more my family. Shoot. <laughs> Some of y'all don't say shoot either. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Cheer. <laughs> you know, just, I'm just keeping it real. Why? Because I've read it. What church you go to? Oh, yeah, I think you're in my church. Glory. Here we go in that church. Watch this. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander. What is slander? I got an issue with Derek, and I'm going to go to TJ and talk about it. I got an issue with Derek, and I'm going to talk to Joe about it. Then I'm going to talk to Michael. Then I'm going to talk to D. Then I'm going to talk to Jalen about it. That's slander. Mm -hmm. Gossip. Yeah. And those things in the Word of God are demonic, and they will keep you behind out of heaven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they will keep you out of heaven. Here we go. Okay, watch this. 
food. As well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to one another or each other, tender hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. So, once again, church, the walk of love isn't easy, but it's a requirement. I'll say it again. The walk of love isn't easy, but it's a requirement. And so every day I teach on this, every Sunday, you will be faced with walking in love. With people that you either love because they're in your life, or people who may be occasional strangers. And who will push your button, and the enemy is waiting to see how you react. Because he knows how to make you fall. The Bible says the enemy walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour or tempt. Uh, Genesis 4 is, is talking to Cain after Cain killed his brother and says, Cain, this is God talking to Cain, says, says, Cain, why are you, or he says, why is, why is your countenance fallen or, or why you got a bad attitude? He says, sin is lurking at your door, but you can overcome it. So I'll say to you too. Sin is lurking at your door, but you can overcome it. Why? By walking in agape love. Amen? Amen. Let's pray.